The Earth is feeling the effects for some solar wind coming from a massive coronal hole. And the sun turns its active face towards us again, which is already bringing us more flares and a chance for some new solar storms. Those stories and more in the news this week. Although the sun has been extremely flare quiet over the past couple weeks, it has kept us busy. We've been under the influence from some fast wind from this massive coronal hole. You can see it covers almost the entire northern hemisphere and stretches almost all the way across the sun. Now we're waiting for the most equatorial region of this big coronal hole to hit us and we should start feeling the effects of that here in the next day or so. Meanwhile, if you look further across the east limb of the sun, there's a lot of activity that's beginning to rotate into Earth view. We've already been hitting a couple flares. Region 2366 has flared for us already, and we've seen some serious activity on the backside. So what this could mean is that as these continue to rotate into the Earth strike zone, we could start seeing some solar storms and some activity could pick up this week. Switching to our M flare threat level, you can see we've been well below the seafloor for a number of days. Now things starting around the 8th began to pop uh, a little bit higher. We almost reached the M flare threat level, but things have since quieted back down, but we're keeping our eyes on region 2366 just in case it begins to act up again. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see we've mostly been pretty quiet. There have been a couple pops here right around the turn of the month, but nothing that's been really sustained. Until we got to about December 5th when we really started feeling the effects of the fast wind from that coronal hole, and it kept it as active conditions and active conditions for nearly three days. It did really pop us up over storm level for very long, and now things are beginning to quiet down, but we are still waiting for the most uh, equatorial part of that coronal hole and the fast wind from it, and that could pop us back up easily into active conditions and possibly into storm conditions here in the next day or so. And the quiet to active conditions have brought us some gorgeous aurora all over the world, including Svalbard, and we had gorgeous aurora glow in Aberdeenshire. We had beautiful curtains in Sweden. We had beautiful uh, time lapse uh, it, during quiet conditions in Iceland. This is from my boss's vacation. We had gorgeous pillars in Ontario. We had beautiful green aurora glow in British Columbia and in Regina, Saskatchewan. We had coronas in Yellowknife. We had beautiful pulsating aurora in uh, Elk Point, Alberta. And gorgeous aurora in Alex, Alberta. We had beautiful aurora even in the United States. Here's some in Minnesota. And in Down Under, we had gorgeous aurora even glowing with some purples in New Zealand. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can see immediately is that the sun has been incredibly active on the backside. There have been multiple regions that have been very busy firing off solar storm after solar storm. You can see them as like little explosions, little poofs of, of stuff that blow off the sun. Now these regions here are going to be rotating into Earth view really within the next couple days or so. And as a matter of fact, one of them just the other day launched a huge solar storm that is now hitting Mercury and will be hitting a spacecraft called Maven here in the next day. So when these rotate into Earth view and especially into the Earth strike zone within the next week, we could start seeing some Earth-directed solar storms. Returning to the disk, you can see we've actually had very little activity in Earth view over pretty much the past week. But finally, the east side is showing signs of life. We have regions like 2466, which have fired off two near M-class flares, and region 2465, which is also showing signs of life. We also have these two new regions that you're barely beginning to see that are coming into Earth view now. Those regions are two of four very active regions that were on the backside that have been firing solar storm after solar storm. So as these regions rotate into Earth view and especially into the Earth strike zone, we might actually see some new solar storms headed our way. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the impact of that fast wind that we've been expecting. NOAA is giving us about a 55% chance of a major storm uh, at high latitudes over the 10th and, and into the 11th. At mid-latitudes, we're only expecting about a 20% chance of a minor storm, but pretty much active conditions, We definitely. After that, things will begin to settle back down. But of course, all of this could change if a solar storm is launched our way. 
Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we haven't been seeing much activity in the way of flares, but we are getting these new regions to rotating into view. So NOAA is giving us about a 10 to 15 percent chance of an M-class flare over the next few days, but expect that to rise as these new regions that have been extremely busy on the backside begin to rotate into Earth view. Meanwhile, we don't expect to have any solar particle radiation storms at this moment, and that should stay for quite a while, so you amateur radio operators and GPS operators should be very, very happy. So this week it looks like it's out with coronal holes and fast wind and in with some active flare conditions and possibly a solar storm or two. And that should make you aurora photographers happy because you might finally be able to get some sustained solar storm levels which should bring aurora down to mid latitude so some of you aurora photographers can finally get the shots that you've been just dying for over the past week or so. But then again, those active flare conditions will actually bring up the noise floor on the amateur radio band. So you ham radio operators, you may be a little bit more frustrated uh, because conditions will continue to be noisy over the next week or so. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.